Hey guys, my name is Shai and today we are tuning into Pluto to see what kind of messages come through for you. As always, this reading is timeless. However, as always, there is usually something that happens astrologically to kind of make a planet come up in my consciousness and it just so happens that today Pluto has been retrograde for several months and today he is going direct and I, it has been really fascinating to notice how this energy of Pluto moving direct is affecting everybody differently. Um, some of us are really just feeling it as a really transformative burst of energy coming through, feeling like we are just good to go, ready to transform, ready to be like the butterfly coming out of the cocoon. And other people are feeling this burst of Plutonic energy as kind of fears surrounding manipulation and control you know it's that kind of stereotypical plutonic energy of uh gaining power through money and then using that to control people that is really coming up as a theme for a lot of people um so i wanted to do this reading to kind of see for you guys how you are like processing and digesting this influx of plutonic energy and of course this is for everybody um even if you're not watching this anywhere near the time of any kind of Pluto transit. So let's go ahead and get into your readings. It's just cards number one to four. So go ahead and pick and I'll see you in your reading. Hey, pile one, welcome to your reading. You guys, I'm using the moon child deck for you. And it's interesting because the main Oracle card you guys got is this Neptune sacrifice. That's interesting to me because Neptune is considered a higher octave of the moon. So we definitely have a dreamy type of watery, almost like misty. I'm kind of seeing clouds and a fog. I feel for you guys that's going to be lifting, but you've been in a place of a fog and mystery. And I think to transform out of the fog for you guys this this plutonic energy I, I feel you're leaning more into the more pleasant vibration of transformation and um, freedom to get out of this fog you've been in but in order to make your transformation you're gonna have to leave something behind that's always how it works right when the butterfly leaves the cocoon the butterfly must leave the cocoon behind so right away when I said that, well, whatever, what is your cocoon? What do you think you need to leave behind? Something came up in your mind, obviously, and that's the thing. <laughs> that's the thing you need to leave behind. It, it, it was great. It was your cocoon. It gave you a space to exist and to grow and to be safe, but you're going to have to grow beyond that. And because, you know, this Neptune sacrifice card is sitting right on top of the Two of Swords and the Two of Swords is always trying to find your way. Which direction do you want to take and what blindfolds do you need to take off in order to figure it out? Um, this particular Two of Swords is not depicted with a blindfold, um, but it often is. Um, and I really feel with the Two of Swords, it's you're, feel, you're feeling like you're at a crossroads, but you just can't figure out which way to go. Which fork in the road do you take? And... I just heard a secret option C or secret option three. Maybe if you feel like you're at a fork in the road and that you can only go left or right, is that really the case? Do you really only have two options here? Or can you make an, a rather extreme change or an extreme transformation and blaze your own trail? Literally, you can think of the metaphor. If you're walking down through like a hiking trail in the woods and you come to a fork and it's, you know, left or right, but Maybe at the end of one trail, there is a bear and at the other trail, there, there is a cliff. And so you don't want to go either way. Those are both bad. Or maybe even maybe it's not even that they're dangerous. Maybe they just don't seem appealing to you. Um, maybe one of them loops back around the way you came and one of them is just way too, like, takes you down into, like, a dry desert and you'd really rather stick to the lush forest, that kind of thing. So do you really need to take either of those paths or can you take your own path? Can you blaze off into the woods, into the forest and go your own path? way. I think, yeah, I think you guys are being called to go your own way, but in order to do that, what needs to be sacrificed? What needs to be left behind? It might be your fear of going your own way or 
Um, honestly, you guys have a lot of people <laughs> in, in your spread. You know, I only pulled five tarot cards and you got the Queen of Cups, the Page of Cups, and the Knight of Wands. Now, these don't necessarily reflect external figures for all of you, but I think for some of you, they do. For some of you, there might be people holding you back. And it's not necessarily that you guys need to break up with somebody or to get rid of some friends or even to make a distance between yourself and family members, but maybe it is simply getting okay with disagreeing with them, getting okay with you guys developing more independence. Um, you know, if, if this is a romantic relationship, can you, you know, you don't necessarily need to jump to the conclusion that you guys need to break up, but can you, if your relationship is a little codependent, can you develop more independence and then healthy interdependence within that relationship instead of it being so codependent, right? There might need, there might need to be like a rejiggering, <laughs> um, a reallocating of your energy within the relationship. Um, I really get that with this Queen of Cups over here. The Queen of Cups, I mean, she's a really powerful figure, a really good card. Um, but if... If this is if this energy is out of balance, it can really be that she is giving way more than she's receiving in return. And Pluto doesn't like that. <laughs> Pluto is a very, very independent energy and a very like it's Scorpio energy, right? It's Scorpio energy. It is um a Scorpio energy wants to get what it deserves and it also wants what it wants, right? And uh, this Queen of Cups energy is a little bit at odds with that. This is, this Queen of Cups is more of a cancer, Cancerian energy, a Cancer energy. And I, I just feel like there needs to be more assertiveness coming through for some of you, um, especially this Nine of Wands. Um, it's really this Queen of Cups paired with the Nine of Wands that is kind of giving me that vibe because this Nine of Wands is um, a little tired, a little exhausted, a little bit like you are defensive and feeling embattled. Like there's been some kind of long-term struggle. This is a really nice Nine of Wands. As you can see, it's not somebody defending a castle. It is this person meditating and all of their chakras lighting up. Um, but it's still the Nine of Wands. There is still that energy of fatigue and exhaustion and kind of wondering if you should throw in the towel. So I think you're getting a little bit tired of operating in this Queen of Cups energy, getting tired of, you know, being so giving, um, being so altruistic all the time. And I think and it's not because you don't want to be like that anymore. It's that you want to bring that energy more into balance. You don't want to be giving more than you're receiving. So this Nine of Wands also invites you to tune back into your own energy, to take time out for yourself and to, you know, do your inner work. This This person who's meditating is lighting up all of their transpersonal chakras, actually. So it also signals to taking time out in order to recharge your batteries, you know, um, do whatever cheesy self-care things you need to do in order to look after yourself, look after yourself on this one. And that will actually lead you to a feeling of being reborn and to allow you to bring in new youthful energy and a little bit of fiery energy that you maybe have been lacking because you're going to be moving from this almost like exhausted queen of cups into the page of cups and the knight of wands which is you know you might think oh going from the queen of cups to the page of cups is almost like regressing uh but not really this is letting your inner child out to play this is you getting in touch with who you really are deep down inside and feeling much more playful and much more in touch with your innocence and feeling fresh and energized. And this page of cups, as you can see, she is walking up into this great archway and this is an archway of transformation. You know, she goes through there and Pluto is going to transform you. You're going to be transformed once you walk through this archway. There's a new world over there once you leave behind um, whatever is holding you back. And once you, once you take secret options three, what is your, what, what is, what is your third option? What is your independent personal path that you can take for yourself? going to take you through this archway. And then you'll be feeling much more like the Knight of Wands with this ability to manifest and explore and the fiery passion. And like I was saying, uh, in the very beginning of the video that, you know, some of us are feeling the plutonic energy as a burst of 
like strength and creative energy and resilience and just feeling like you're coming alive again. And that is what's uh, going to be going on with you guys. You guys might need to go through the transformation first. You might need to walk through that transformative doorway. But once you do, you're it's it's going to be so fresh. <laughs> you're going to be so fresh, so off to a new start and feeling like you managed to hit the reset button on, on your life and definitely on your energy. So... Yeah, you're, you're just at a little bit of crossroads. Really, I think you guys are handling, you're channeling this plutonic energy really well. And that means that you guys have done the inner work. You don't have a lot of distortions. Because the thing with, with plutonic energy is that if you have a lot of distortions, a lot of issues, a lot of trauma to do with power, like power struggles, um, to do with money, and to do with you know, the darker things in life, like weird scorpionic energy. If you have a lot of baggage surrounding those topics, then Pluto is going to come through and help you work through those. But unfortunately for those people, they have to work through it by getting triggered. Those things are going to be triggered, right? So I think you guys, you've cleared out like a ton of that junk, you know, this is really um, a signal that you guys have been doing a lot of inner work, clearing out your chakras, clearing out your energy body, clearing out your past life trauma, all of that. You guys are have come a long way and you're quite, quite high frequency in order for this energy to be affecting you in this way. So, I mean, you guys should give yourselves a pat on the bat, back and know that you are able to tune into higher frequencies of this plutonic energy because you are higher in frequency because you have left behind a lot of your denser energies. It's really, really, really good. <laughs> I'm glad, I'm glad to see um, that this is how it's working out for you guys. So for you guys, this is just a little bit of a fork in the road and you just need to figure out the one thing, like the one lower density thing that is holding you back. And I think for you guys, you don't even really need to let it go as in, like I said, if this is a relationship or a job for some of you, it's not that you necessarily need to break up with that person or to leave that job, but you can use this influx of plutonic energy to transform it without leaving it behind. And that is one of the benefits of having done all this work you guys have done in order to raise your frequency. You no longer need to break up with somebody or leave a job or move cities in order to transform that aspect of your life. You can literally transform it while living it, which is super fucking cool. And I love to see that. And I'm happy for you guys because... I think you're going to navigate this little little bit of a speed bump with a lot of ease and grace and flow. And from there, you're going to be like the butterfly coming out of the cocoon. So I think that's what I'm seeing for, your guy, for you guys. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in. I hope to see you again soon. Bye. Hey, pal two, welcome to your reading. I apologize in advance for how poorly these cards are showing up. I actually haven't used this deck. Uh, like I used to film in my kitchen and this deck worked okay in there, but now I film at a desk and I can't get them all to show up. I will definitely hold them all up on the camera so you, you can see them. And um, I'm sorry, I didn't want to use a different deck or reshuffle because I felt that would have been rather disingenuous. So we're just going to forge ahead and I will show you each card <laughs> individually. But there is actually a metaphor with this, right? Um, there is something I think that you're not seeing clearly. Um, something that is there, it's right in front of you, but there's some kind of a, like, film, film, um, like a fogginess uh, kind of getting in your way, um, as if, like, your glasses are really dirty. <laughs> and that's going to be what you guys are kind of working on finding finding the clarity in in this issue and you know one of your cards at the bottom here is this two of swords so this two of swords i'll try to rotate the light on it so you can see it is you know the pretty typical two of swords it is somebody feeling that they are sitting under the moon you know we have the moon on top here and then she has two swords crossing her neck. I feel like for this two of swords, it is maybe you're feeling like something is coming at you and you don't know what it is. 
what is what is this threat? Um, I'm actually getting quite a, a threatening vibe <laughs> from this Two of Swords, as if you don't know who is holding the swords at your throat. But it's actually you. This person here holding the two swords is... <laughs> they're holding the swords themselves, but I feel like you're still feeling threatened by them. So, you guys, I feel that you are sensing this plutonic energy a little bit more skewing towards that manipulation and control factors, but this is going to work out well for you. You know, as you can see, Jupiter return benefits is your oracle card you have at the top here. So, as we work through these tarot cards, just remember, this is where you're going. Jupiter return benefits. When, and when Jupiter comes around to give you benefits, this is, this is wonderful. This is a big deal. This is, you know, your life taking off. This is money coming through. This is business opportunities and creative projects working out and relationships working out. Literally, when Jupiter is coming to give you a gift, everything gets better. This is, this is where you're headed. This is you sitting at the top of your spread. Jupiter is coming back around. You know, it doesn't matter that if you're not having your Saturn or your Jupiter return right now, it doesn't matter. It's that Jupiter is going to be coming through. Something is going to be coming through with uh, benefits for you. But I think you need to clear the mist or clean your glasses first because we have this uh, Six of Cups. And I've recently learned something about the Six of Cups. I've kind of changed my relationship with the card. It's not merely that nostalgia or childhood memories. I've been seeing it over and over and over again coming up when people are remembering things about their past lives. And you got it coming up with this Eight of Pentacles. And the Eight of Pentacles is always, you know, working on something. Your creative skills, your business skills, your life skills you're gaining mastery in some kind of area. So to have this come up with the Six of Cups, um, I think you guys are going, going to be, you know, whether you know it or not, we remember things about our past lives all the time. And most of the time we don't realize that's what we're doing. So this could be coming through in your dreams and, or some of you will, will actually get a flash and go, whoa, 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 that was a past life. I, I just remembered that. And even if you've never ha had any past life memories come through before, um, you know, don't give up that it's going to come through. It'll come through <laughs> when it's supposed to, when you're least expecting it. So, yeah, now that makes sense with this threatening energy of the Two of Swords. A lot of the time when we remember past lives, those lives <laughs> aren't great. Um, in fact, I've never re really remembered anything about my past lives that wasn't rather traumatic. Either I was getting killed or I was about to be killed, or I was fleeing for my life, always something like that, because those memories are so imbued with so much intensity and emotion, and they're often right towards the end of our lives. So um, for a lot of us, those are the things that come through. But I think what you will find is that even if you remember getting murdered or something in a past life, or getting tortured, or having your, um, your home threatened, something like that, you will find that within that memory, there is some kind of silver lining, something that you learned, some kind of soul gift that you are remembering. And again, you can, you guys can be having dreams that you don't realize are reflecting your past lives. Um, a lot of the time for me, I mean, it's different for everybody. It depends on how your mind, you know, chooses to <laughs> present these things to you. But for me, I often have dreams about past lives, but they don't look like that life looked. They look like my life does now. Just for example, um, this is the example I, I typically use is that, uh, I remember my life, a life in Lemuria when I was fleeing the fall of Lemuria, like, you know, when it was flooding and we were, you know, Lemuria was losing its land. And I remember getting on a ship and, you know, sailing away <laughs> with my, with my soul family. Um, but it's funny because it doesn't, the dream, this recurring dream I have, it never looks like Lemuria and it never looks like a Lemurian ship or how my friends looked in that life, they look like they do now. They look like how I know them now. And when I get on that ship, it looks like a modern ship. It looks like a, actually like a ferry from my hometown. <laughs> so you can be definitely be having dreams about past lives that you think are just a mishmash of stuff you've seen in this life. But it's just that those images can, for a lot of people, be representing stuff that happened in a past life. It's just that 
you know, if you're not very visual, if you're like me and you're totally not visual, you're, you're, you're not necessarily going to remember the visual details of the past life, but you'll remember the events, the people who were there, the things that happened, but you'll see them, um, just in images that are familiar to you. So really pay attention to anything you remember in your dreams or even daydreams that are coming through because accessing these past life memories and working through the, the trauma of them will be unlocking these benefits for you. Yeah, you guys could be remembering things like, you know, being some kind of magical practitioner, being a witch. Uh, and often if you've had a lot lives as a witch, you'll remember, you know, getting caught by the Inquisition and being burnt at the stake or something like that. That's really common. Um, you guys might be remembering, you know, being some kind of priest or priestess um, and getting being persecuted for that. You, you guys might be remembering... Um, really intense family conflict, like in your nuclear family, if that's how you've worked through it, these energies, you guys could be remembering, um, like having your, your, your home threatened, like your village, or for some of you, your entire planet getting attacked and having to run, being imprisoned, those kind of things, that kind of, uh, energy. Um, but if you can work through those issues, you will find something to learn from that. Like, if, for example, if you remember being burnt at the stake as a witch, you will remember some of your witchcraft. You'll, you will remember your magical power. You will, you will remember how you worked your soul gifts in that lifetime. And then you can use what you knew in that life. You can use it in this life, um, you know, to be able to work more magic, to be able to set stronger intentions, to be able to heal people or heal yourself. And there's going to be yeah, something important coming through. And again, if you if you never really figure out what this is consciously, it's fine. It's This is just going to be happening on a subconscious level and you're still going to be working through it. And it's going to work just as well, even if you don't figure any of this out on a conscious level. So you don't need to worry about that too much. This is going to be working through, you know, Pluto is helping you work it out. <laughs> Pluto is sending you this energy and helping you figure this out. And it's going to be fine one way or the other. And on your higher tier here, you've got the King of Swords this king of swords who is entirely in control, <laughs> entirely in control of his mind, entirely in control of his destiny. And you also have the ace of wands, which is an interesting pair. This is when you embody this king of swords energy along with the ace of wands. This is like <laughs> you being able to manifest whatever it is that you desire, you being able to transform whatever you need to transform and I think with this, you will be moving away from that fear of the fear of the people who are trying to control you. Right now, I feel like you're a little bit more in the fear energy, um, worrying about those in power and how they control you. But I think through working through this past life experience, you will realize that you are the one in control. You are, you are powerful and you will not feel the need to control others because you will feel confident and sovereign in your own right. And you will know that nobody can control you. You know, you will start to laugh when you see people trying to control you because you'll be like, they can't do anything to me. You know, you will really realize that people people can only control you if you give your power away to them and you're going to be reclaiming your power, bringing it all back to you. And then <laughs> receiving these Jupiter, these, these Jupiter benefits, receiving the gifts coming back to you that may have been taken from you in this past life. When you went through this traumatic cycle, when you lost your power, when you gave your power away and, you know, had it taken from you, it's all going to be coming back. This is quite a large soul cycle, I think, actually, tuning back into some past life where something horrible happened. <laughs> and finally, now resolving that, like forgiving everything that needs to be forgiven, letting go of everything that needs to be let go of, and reclaiming your power, reclaiming your soul gifts, and learning to stand in your own power and learning to wield whatever your soul gifts are. I mean, it's going to be different for everybody, what, what kind of skills and memories come back from your past lives, but you're going to be reclaiming those and then totally standing in your power from here on out, never looking back. So 
that is really cool. I'm glad to be seeing that for you guys. And I don't think I have anything else to add. So thank you so much for tuning in. I hope to see you guys again soon. Bye. Hey, pile three, welcome to your reading. I feel like you guys are in the power struggle <laughs> or you're under the power struggle, under the control structure. Pluto is bringing up for you issues of power and control and equality, but more to the point, the lack of the inequality issues so that you can eventually work through them and be free of them. I think for some of you, this really strikes me as a, some kind of relationship, not necessarily romantic, but <laughs> uh, I guess just let me read out the cards. You got the Prince of Swords, the Princess of Swords, the Two of Swords over here, which so far all three piles have had this, the Two of Swords. <laughs> That's clearly some kind of plutonic issue coming through of like conflict and disagreement. Here, this Two of Swords is subtexted with the word peace, but I don't feel like you guys are in a peaceful situation yet. I feel like the peace is being, like the swords are still crossed. There is peace on the horizon. You will come into a place of peace, but not yet, not with all of this other energy. You also got the Two of Wands here uh, called Dominion. So there is some kind of power structure or a uh, power struggle or control control sorry guys i can't talk power structure or control issue coming up for you guys and because of the prince of swords the princess of swords and then also this like prince of discs uh, first of all the masculine energy is kind of the overpowering energy right here right in the middle of this whole spread it's the princess of swords and I, I just feel like you're, the masculine energy in your situation is out of control, is the one doing the controlling, and your feminine energy is feeling threatened, feeling disempowered, and feeling uh, not allowed to be her herself. And it's a little bit, I hope you guys can kind of follow along and apply my analogies as they apply to you, because it's just the way I kind of sense patterns of energy you know, I like for this case, I see this over over empowered masculine energy and this disempowered feminine energy. And that's just kind of the general energetic flow and how that manifests for each one of you guys individually can be completely different. Um, still just within that same the same pattern. So for some of you, like just to give a very specific example, for some people, <laughs> this could very easily be like a like love triangle where there are two dudes <laughs> and one girl, uh, you know, and whatever's going on with that, <laughs> right? But for other people, this could be completely internal where you're trying to strike a balance between your yin and yang energies, I think is the better way to describe that. You know, you're with the the yin energy being your feminine energy, your creativity, your fertility, um, your empathy, your intuition and your sense of freedom, all of that yin, the black half of the yin yang, and versus the yang, the white half of the yin yang, the masculine energy, the mind, your rationality, um, your sense of control and safety and security. Um, so for some of you, it's you're just trying to balance that within yourself, which could mean letting go of your rational mind um, and bringing in more creativity and leaning more into your intuition, like letting, letting your rational mind go, letting your thoughts be still and learning to re- um, revitalize your intuition and leaning more into your intuition. So I think you guys can kind of see how this can be, <laughs> this pattern can be working out in so many different ways. But at the end of the day, the main thing here, the main pattern is this, this total power struggle between masculine and feminine. And you can take that as archetypally as you want, zoom that right out to your own internal yin and yang energies, or this could be applying to you with some kind of love triangle situation, or it could be like a really um, overbearing, like toxic boss, male or female, just with anybody with a lot of masculine energy who is really being domineering in the workplace um, and making you feel like you're attacked at work. It can even be something like that. <laughs> so... Yeah, this is, 
It's just so, so divisive, so polarized. And up, the t up at the top here, this Oracle card, Void of Course Moon, missing. So the root cause of this power struggle, the root cause of this conflict, and the original seed that grew into this out of control control structure, <laughs> it's all caused because you're missing a piece of the puzzle. There's some kind of piece of energy, some kind of theme or emotion or thought that it is missing. There's, there's something that you need to realize or something that you need to like a plant you need to grow like I just saw somebody like planting a seed and watering it and letting it grow there's, there's something that needs to come in there's some type of energy that needs to come in that you need to invite in um, I think you need to be a little bit proactive on this you need to identify what is missing from your life or missing from your emotional experience or missing from your intellectual experience what needs to come in and you're probably feeling that right now you you probably have an idea of what that is for you maybe for some of you it's independence maybe for some of you it is um a sense of love both you know loving for yourself and being able to love others unconditionally you know you're lacking unconditional love in some way for some people it is um needing to learn to trust your intuition more um i know this is pretty like non-specific but this, this reading is so like abstract and the energetic pattern is so ab abstract. I can't, I feel like I need to give you guys lots of examples so that, cause it's going to be different for everybody. It's going to be so different for everybody, but Pluto is essentially coming up for you to help you realize what is missing. And once you can figure out what that is and bring it in, and I keep seeing a, a, somebody planting a seed, something needs to be planted. So this shift you're going to be going through, this transformation you're going to be going through, isn't going to happen overnight. It's going to be really think of it as a long term thing. And that makes a lot of sense because Pluto moves so slowly, right? Pluto doesn't do anything fast. So this is a good time to be looking at your life and really setting long term plans. Where do you want to be in five years? Where do you want to be in 10 years? And then figuring out, okay, in 10 years, I want to be doing this. I want to be in this kind of situation. I mean, don't get too, uh, as always, guys, don't get too fixated on the specifics. Just think about how you want to feel in 10 years, you know? how you want your life to be generally feeling um, and then figure out, you know, what you need to do in order to get to that point, in order to get there and plant those seeds now. And that will be, that's like setting a major, major intention that you'll be able to, you know, tend your garden. You'll grow that seed over the next decade and uh, then you'll be able to so, so reap the rewards and your whole life will be transformed. So just really with this shift, don't be hard on yourselves. Do not expect any immediate transformation. Do not expect your, like, you know, we, sometimes we feel like, oh, you know, I need to make this change. I need to make this change in my life. And then we try for like a week and then we, and then we don't see anything, any results. And then we get all upset with ourselves and we feel all down. And then it's like, oh, why did I even bother trying? It's like for this, this thing needs to be really, really long-term. I'm talking like at least five years, probably more like a decade. <laughs> so um, of course, if there is something, you know, short term that you need to do, like if for those of you where this is like a relationship or a job thing, if you need to get out of that relationship or if you need to find a new job then totally do that, that is kind of planting the seed, right? Even if you end up being single or you end up jobless or you end up at another job that you don't like, but at least maybe it's in a little bit of a, of a more pleasant environment, at least, um, you just think of those as the initial stepping stone. That's not your final result. You're still growing that process, growing that seed over the next 10 years, but that's just your first step, the first seed that is planted. And I think I want to pull a couple more Oracle cards for you guys. I'm going to use this uh, Moonology deck. Step out of your comfort zone north node <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah that's what i was literally just saying you know if you need to break up with somebody do it if you need to leave a job do it if you need to make uh, some kind of paradigm shift in your internal 
world, like with the way you deal with your emotions or with the way you think or your belief systems, this is going to take some kind of major, major shift and it's not going to be comfortable. It's going to be scary. In fact, the thing that you are, for this kind of shift, if your course of action doesn't seem a little bit scary, it's probably not the right course of action. This should feel a little bit uncomfortable. It should feel a little bit scary because that is how you're going to wind up in a place you've never been before. It's that whole, you know, if you want something you've never had, you need to do something you've never done before. So you're going to need to change something <laughs> fairly fundamental about the way you've been existing up until now. Um, but again, since this is such a long-term process, you don't, do not expect yourself to do this all at once. It's going to be happening slowly, slowly, step by step, step by step. Yeah, it's time to take action. <laughs> New moon in Aries. <laughs> uh, yeah, more. Uh, I don't have too much to add with that. I think the card kind of speaks for itself. It, this is time to do the thing. Your commitment is being tested. First quarter moon. So, I mean, there you have it. I suspect for most. Okay, the bottom of the deck. Work through your fears, new moon in Scorpio, <laughs> which is coming up. Uh, and this is a Pluto reading. So yeah, no wonder we got um, a Scorpio card because Pluto rules Scorpio. <sighs> yeah, so this course of action that you need to take is going to be a little bit scary. It's going to be stepping outside of your comfort zone, but it is because Pluto is bringing up your fears for you to face. You know, your commitment is being tested and... Um, I really, really sense a Scorpio energy as, you know, there's a lot of fear in it. That's not the sum totality of Scorpio energy. And, you know, for all of you Scorpio people out there, I'm not giving you a hard time. I'm Scorpio rising myself and I have Pluto exactly on top of my ascendant. <laughs> so I'm really tuned into Scorpio energy and Pluto and all of that. And I love it and I really see all of its benefits. But kind of the, uh, the way most people experience Scorpio energy is it's bringing up all those scary things, bringing up all those fears and bringing them up so you can face them. And it's funny, I'm filming this during Libra season and, but a few, couple of weeks ago, maybe only one week ago, Mercury went into Scorpio and I felt that right away. Like I, that night when Mercury went to Scorpio, I was having all kinds of terrible nightmares and stuff. And I was like, that's weird. It's like, kind of feels like Scorpio season, but it's like totally not Scorpio season. What's going on? And then I checked and yeah, Mercury had just moved into Scorpio. So all this is just to say that this is the perfect time to be facing your fears. If you're watching this right when I post it. Um, and Scorpio season is of course coming up all of you people watching it when I post this. It's going to be the new moon in Scorpio. I wouldn't be surprised, actually, for those of you who care about following the moon cycles and paying attention to that kind of thing, if on, like, within, like, three days of the new moon in Scorpio, if some kind of purge comes up for you, if something comes up that triggers you and really kind of forces you to face your fears, I wouldn't be surprised if that happens for those of you who are paying attention to the moon. <laughs> I mean, you know, it might, it'll happen for you guys not paying attention to the moon as well. You just might not, you know, notice it. But yeah, Pluto, Scorpio, getting you to face your fears, step outside of your comfort zone. And all of this is going to help you figure out what is missing in your life, figure out what you need to bring in in order to restore balance between your masculine and feminine. And again, for some of you, that is quite literal on a human level. And for some of you, that is really, really abstract and archetypal. But it kind of all works out to be the same thing. Um, as soon as you manage to face this thing and set your new course, set your new trajectory, as soon as you step outside of your comfort zone, you're going to feel like you're on a new, a new trajectory, a new road really on like on track onto living your new life and really take the long term at this one because I feel like in a few years you will be able to look back and go wow 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 look how far I have come this is crazy so I'm so glad I went through that now <laughs> you know then so that you could get to where you're going it's going to be like you're starting a whole new course in life that's what this moment is about you're going to be getting yourself on track it's going to be good. I promise once you get through this moment of facing your fear. So 
I think that's what I'm seeing for you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Good luck on your journey, and I hope to see you again soon. Bye. Hey, Pal4, welcome to your reading. I am excited to finally get to yours because I knew it was going to be intense and like just from the deck. Actually, let me show it to you. You guys are seriously tuning into Pluto and Scorpio energy in general, and I am using for you guys the Murder of Crows tarot. Um, I have never done a reading with this before. I only got it a few days ago and I've used it for myself, but I haven't even seen all the cards in this deck. So this is really fresh energy. And just the thing about this deck is that I had first kind of seen it. I'd come across it on Amazon several months ago. And I remember hitting, like put it on, putting it on my wish list because I was like, oh, that deck is super cool, but I'm not going to like it. I'm not going to want it until Scorpio season because it's, as you can see, it's, pretty kind of dark and scorpionic is the best way I can describe it. It's all of, it's all about crows. Um, it's all black and white. Um, a lot of the characters in it are wearing like plague masks and, um, some dark imagery, but it's not like gratuitously dark. It's really artistic and sophisticated, at least so far as I know. As I said, I'm not that, um, experienced with this deck yet. So you're going to be kind of getting this a little bit off the cuff. Um, and I remember when I bought this deck, I bought it a little prematurely and I was like, oh, it's not, it's going to get here like three weeks before Scorpio season even starts. Um, but whatever, I'll just hang on to it because I just, I knew I wasn't going to be interested in it until I started feeling kind of Scorpio energy picking up. And then, um, coincidentally, right, it showed up on the day that Mercury moved into Scorpio. And I felt such a huge heavy hit of Scorpio energy just from Mercury moving into Scorpio. And of course, today, Pluto is going direct and I am feeling super scorpionic. <laughs> um, for what it's worth, I'm Scorpio rising and I have Pluto conjunct my ascendant. So I would actually be really, really curious if any of you guys want to let me know in the comments um, how many of you are Scorpios, you know, sun, moon, rising, or even if you just have uh, like lots of Scorpio energy somewhere else in your chart, because this is like the biggest pocket of scorpionic or plutonic energy that I have um, ever witnessed in a tarot reading. And it was funny, I was wondering why none of the, I was surprised that none of the other um, piles got the death card, but you guys got the death card. So this was just extra cool that you guys got this because um, uh, the death card is associated with Scorpio and with Pluto, uh, all about transformation. And you guys caught the death card right smack in the middle of your spread. And I love <laughs> this depiction of death. It is, you know, death riding on his... <laughs> I don't know if that's supposed to be a horse. It looks uh, like it might have been an ox, but it's like skeletal. Everything's dead. We have this crow kind of peeking in through a a window, but there doesn't appear to be a building. It's, just, it's like there's a window in the sky and this crow is peeking out. Um pretty kind of spooky and cool. <laughs> so essentially that whole spiel about scorpionic energy is that you guys are going through a massive transformation in the best possible way. But if you're feeling like things are a little bit dark and if you're feeling like you're like your energetic field is getting contaminated by like nightmares or just fears or just weird fixation on death, like weird stuff, like, right? Like weird, almost Halloween type of stuff. Um, I would say don't like, you know, observe that and work through it as you need to, but don't like get too worried about it. I know when I feel a Scorpio energy coming through, you know, I'll have weird nightmares or I'll wake up and I'll just start watching YouTube videos of like, you know, lost uh, cats and dogs that get rescued and they have to go, you know, it's always a happy ending, but I, for some reason, Scorpio energy makes me get like fixated on like the suffering and the struggle and then the happy ending. It's like, normally I don't like to watch videos of, you know, dogs that are like, you know, almost dead on the street. And even though I know it's going to be a happy ending, I still don't like to watch it because why would I, it's just so sad, right? It just makes me bawl my eyes out. I can't watch stuff like that. But during Scorpio season, yeah, I watch stuff like that. It's like I get a weird fixation on like morbid topics. So you guys might be feeling that come be coming through. Um, and look, it's funny, you guys got the 10 of cups, but 
even this Ten of Cups looks like the Death card. We have this, like, white crow. Since this crow, this image of this crow is white, it's like the phoenix rising. This is such a phoenix rising, Scorpio, death, transformative energy. Um, <laughs> very interesting depiction of the Ten of Cups. Um, I mean, Ten of Cups is, is a good card, you know? Um, I'm not entirely sure how to interpret it in this deck. I think I'm going to see it more as like the the pinnacle or the fulfillment of your empathic energy, you know, because cups are water energy, Scorpio is also water energy, and I think your psychic abilities are going to be like coming online, like you're being, you're, you're feeling empathic, your empathic abilities are blowing out of the water, and that's another reason why you guys might be feeling these weird, like, morbid kind of themes coming up around you because you're you're getting really tuned into what other people are are feeling and of course since the majority of the collective is going through a lot of pain and suffering and struggle and he trying to heal their trauma they're working through all of that and i think you're feeling it i think you guys have actually already done a ton of healing and a ton of frequency raising and that you have been totally totally shedding all of your lower density energies um but it, oddly enough, now that you're kind of getting free of your own baggage and trauma, not that all of it is gone, but a lot of it has, you've left a lot of it behind. That's actually allowing you to pick up more on the suffering of others. Since you're beginning to suffer less yourself, you're more sensitive to the suffering of others, which is, is tough, is tough. But you guys can totally handle this because look at this. You guys got the king of pentacles. Um, you, this is, I think an opportunity for you guys to be like a shoulder for others to cry on. But I think more than cry on, you can really carry the load for other people if you choose to. If there's people that you care enough about um, or if you're just feeling up for the task, right, you can really, you might feel sometimes that the world, that the weight of the world is on your shoulders, but it's because you have so much strength um, and you're able to carry a lot, like a huge energetic load for other people. Yeah. And interestingly, that is one of the major strengths of Plutonic or Scorpionic energy. Um, you know, we can think of Scorpio energy as, you know, fear and kind of angst and being really emotional and feeling really the butt hurt. Scorpios can feel really butt hurt. I know that as a Scorpio rising and plutonic energy can be really, uh, you know, like plutocrats, you know, just having power through having a lot of money. And all of these things are kind of unpleasant and negative um, and they can be just controlling and like kind of low vibrational. But the strengths, when we get into the higher frequencies of Scorpio and the higher frequencies of Plutonic energy, it is so much strength. It is strength that has been earned through suffering and it is strength that is gained through transformation. And that I've noticed that people who don't really have any Scorpio energy or any interesting Pluto placements in their natal chart tend to like lack a certain amount of intensity, lack a certain amount of energy, a certain amount of like individuation. So you guys aren't lacking any of that. You guys are really tapping into the, the strengths of this energy and the more higher vibrational iterations of these energies. It's, it's really cool. And it is giving you such a foundation of strength. And yeah, actually <laughs> moving up here, you got three of pentacles and the sun. Three of pentacles is, I just think of it as, you know, the teamwork card. <laughs> um, this, this figure here is clearly working on something. They're like working on it almost looks like a crow totem pole. <laughs> Again, I haven't seen this card before, so you're just getting my very initial impressions. But this person, even though they're wearing a plague mask, they are still working hard. And actually, that might be super poignant in 2020. <laughs> we have this, you know, quote unquote plague going around. But I think you guys are finding a way to thrive. You are finding a way to continue working um, working through the adversity of this whole like collective situation of this year. And it, this is cool because next to the King of Pentacles, which is such a sovereign, powerful energy, you have this sun. And it doesn't get much more sovereign and powerful than the sun. 
this is actually a person here riding a giant crow and the sun is in the sky. It almost looks like the moon. But this is, wow, you're riding the crow. The crows here being um, potentially symbols of darkness and fear and like scavenger type of energy. Um, I, but I, I, I super love crows. They are such powerful animals. But this, the way this person is kind of riding the crow, I think you guys are really getting a handle on your fears, really getting a handle on your darker energies, the darker manifestations of your of your energies, like really integrating your shadow energies, all of that. It's just so much strength, so much power, and so much sovereignty, all in the best possible way. You don't worry about those words if you feel they might, you know, have weird social connotations. No, this is just about you and your own being who you were born to be and totally tapping into your inner power. Like... And I, I think the, o the only like invitation here is for you guys to kind of pay it forward or to use your strength for the benefit of others. Um, you know, how can you, how can you, how can you do that? How is that relevant for you? Because you, you have come so far, you have, <laughs> you know, 10 of cups, king of pentacles, the sun all being transformed so i feel like you guys are actually completing a journey of the self like you've been on a very independent journey um which has been great you have been building up your strengths you have been getting to know yourself you have been doing your healing letting go of you, all of those lower density energies like i mentioned before but now i think this turning point for you this death transformation is the invitation is okay now that you have gained this level of like self-actualization this level of mastery what are you going to do with it what are you going to do with it different for everybody but there the universe in this spread is inviting you or pluto in fact is inviting you pluto is inviting you to figure out how you can be of service now that you're at this level and that is a very interesting message to be coming through from pluto because you know as i've been describing a Scorpio energy and Pluto energy, they're not particularly service oriented. They are self oriented. They are about your own internal dynamics and Pluto energy in particular can often be control over others. But I feel like that is a lower level iteration of Pluto energy. You guys are being invited into like the upper echelons of Plutonic power. And how can you use this Plutonic energy for the good of others, for the good of the collective? This is a big deal because I was thinking about this like in the car earlier, my husband was driving me around and I was thinking about how I wanted to do this Pluto reading. And I was thinking about how we haven't really seen a lot of Pluto's higher iterations. We only see the Plutocrats. We only see the people using Plut Plutonic power as like a way of gaining money and then using money to control people. And I, I, I was like, does it have something to do with how far away Pluto is from the sun? I was like, do, do we like on earth the outer planets, the ones that are farther away, is it harder for us to tune into their higher frequencies? Do we typically get their lower frequencies? Have we been kind of under the yoke of Pluto's lower frequencies? Um, that's That was just sort of, you know, what, what was coming through for me when I was in the car, what I was kind of working through. And I was like, okay, you know, I feel like I, I can kind of get glimpses of the higher frequencies of Plutonic power because like I said, I, I'm Scorpio rising with Pluto on my ascendant. So... That makes me, in my understanding, um, in my feeling, um, a very Plutonic type of person. And I feel like I can understand what the higher frequencies of Plutonic energy are, but I don't typically see them out in the world. You know, the positive power of transformation. The positive power of transformation. How can you transform your environment? Not as a way to tear it down, not as a way to control others, but as a way to empower everybody. How do you do that? Um, <laughs> And I think you guys are going to be coming through to figure that out. How can you use your powers of immense transformation for the good of all? And I've been looking at this card on and off throughout this whole rant here. And I haven't shown it to you. Fourth house roots. Fourth house is, you know, your family. It's cancer energy. So this is why I was talking about bringing it back to the good of the collective, bringing all of this back to helping others because you're being asked to tune into your family, your family energy. And that doesn't have to be your, your like 
literal family. It can be whatever your family is to you. It can be your literal family. It can be your physical community. Or if you don't feel like you have a family, this is your soul family. How can you serve your soul family? You have soul family out there, people that you love and who love you more than I can describe. Um, some of them are alive right now, just on pla in places of the planet that you haven't met them yet. And maybe you never will meet them, but they are sharing their energy with you. You guys are energetically connected. You are always energetically connected with your soul family. Um, and including all of your soul family who's not incarnated right now. They, you, you have your soul family out there. They are out there. And how can you serve them? How can you use all that you've learned to serve them? How can you help them? And through helping them, you also help yourself <laughs> because you are all energetically connected. So I think you guys have gone through a very long period of struggle dating back many lifetimes. <laughs> and this moment of death, this death moment, this transformation moment, not physical death, energetic transformation, you are coming out of this very long protracted period of struggle and that is how you are going to be embodying these higher frequencies of plutonic energy and then you bring them back to serve your family, to serve your people, to serve those you care about the most. You can use everything you learned from your period of suffering and struggling it's like you're coming back to them transformed. And with that, you'll be able to transform them, transform your environment absolutely for the better, for your highest good, for their highest good, for the highest good of the whole collective. I am so happy to have tuned into your guys' energy and to have synced up with this reading. It <laughs> this is the most um, resonant pile for me because because it matches up so strongly with what I was thinking about earlier in the car. Um, I'm glad to be able to have been... I'm glad that I was able to connect with other people who are tuning into these higher frequencies of plutonic energy. That is super cool. Now I know I'm not crazy. I'm not the only one who's been um, kind of feeling into that. And I think that I'd just like to leave it at that. So thank you so much for existing, guys. And I hope to see you again soon. Bye.